Ever since he came down that escalator on June 16th, 2015, Donald Trump has been a loud and disruptive presence on the national stage. But for many Americans, his electoral eviction may make him seem like background noise, especially when his speeches are rarely carried live. McKay Coppins argues in The Atlantic, these days Trump exists in many Americans' minds as a hazy silhouette rather than as an actual person who's telling the country every day who he is and what he plans to do with the second term. To rectify this problem, McKay Coppins says people should attend a Trump rally. Now, normally we avoid airing many of the twice impeached, four times indicted on 91 counts former president's ludicrous comments. But here's a sample of what voters may have missed. I think cognitively I'm better than I was 20 years ago. I don't know why. Well, I just met non-liquid gold. You know where it was? Iowa. It's called corn. They have, it's non-liquid. That's my take. You have more non-liquid gold. They said, what is that? I said, corn. I'm also going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States for being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong action on crime. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. Joining me now, McKay Coppins, staff writer at The Atlantic and author of the book Romney, A Reckoning. McKay, thank you very much for coming to the Saturday show. Uh, you argue, quote, for many Americans, the former president has become an abstraction. You argue that folks should go to a Trump rally to see for themselves what his campaign is all about. Why should anyone do that? I understand that it sounds unpleasant to a lot of your viewers, most likely, and I understand why. My argument is that this is basic civic hygiene, right? I think that, uh, as you noted, in 2016 and really throughout Trump's term in office, he was all-consuming. We all knew what he was saying every day, whether we liked it or not. We saw him on TV all the time. After he lost, and especially after January 6th, um, there, there was kind of a consensus in the media and in the political class that he was given too much exposure, too much airtime, that he benefited from that. And so we in the media, social media, platforms like Twitter, responded by essentially deplatforming him or at least moving him to the margins. We don't carry his speeches live. He's not on Twitter anymore. Uh, and, and as a result, he has, I think you, you hit it right there, he, he's become background noise. I think a lot of people have forgotten what he's all about, or they have kind of a vague sense of what he's about, but they they are not paying attention to the things that he's saying on the campaign trail every day, the things that he's promising his supporters he will do with the second term. And I think it's important that voters understand what's at stake in this election. Mm -hmm. I, you point out in the piece, and you've been to countless countless Trump rallies, uh, particularly in, in 2016 and for various reasons, a, a, a book and other things, um, you sort of fell out of touch, but you started going again. Have you noticed a difference between Trump 2016 rallies and Trump 2024 rallies? I was surprised when I went to a rally in Mason City, Iowa, earlier this month by a couple things. One was a uh, in some ways, he, he seems to have kind of lost his instinct for entertainment. And I know that's a crass way of putting it, but part of what made him so powerful in 2016 was that he knew how to work a crowd. He knew how to say things that would grab and hold people's attention, whether you loved him or hated him. And I'm not sure that's true anymore. Multiple At multiple points during his speech in Mason City, he started rambling about, you know, losing the 2020 election and how it was stolen from him and his own personal sense of martyrdom. And he really lost the crowd. I, I Several people were leaving early, halfway through the speech. One woman in front of me actually kind of exasperated, turned to the man, man next to her and said, uh, he's just babbling now. So that was one thing that surprised me. But I will say something that has not changed is the dark undercurrent, both to his rhetoric and to the beliefs of many of his supporters. I encountered many people who seemed, frankly, radicalized by eight years of exposure to Trump. And I think that's another thing that will be valuable to understand by going to one of these rallies.